Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Today I'm bringing you something that we have all been expecting, maybe a bit earlier than planned, at least if you ask Intel, and that's probably due to AMD which made them a bit anxious on account of the positive outcome of their Ryzen and Threadripper platforms. This kind of rivalry and real threat finally made Intel change their approach when it comes to their core series of CPUs, so for this fight Intel decided decided, beside bringing in some minor architectural changes, to attack this problem before all by bumping up the core count for their new 8th gen core CPUs for Coffee Lake platform. For starters, we will get a total of 6 different SKUs, basically reflecting your previous generation lineup, but using the 8 as a first number instead of 7. Beside that, we have some architectural optimizations and tweaks going on in the background. I won't go too deep into it since it isn't that different from KB Lake, but most importantly, as you can see it here from the chart, the core count of each core series from i3 to i7 was bumped up by two more cores, which also increased the cache size. So now we have a 4 core 4 thread i3, 6 core 6 thread i5, and 6 core 12 thread core i7. Also, by the looks of it, the price price went up around 10 to 20 dollars more depending on the model. As some of you may notice, this particular sample that I have here has 3.6 GHz engraved onto it, which indicates that this is a Core i5-8600K, as the Core i7-8700K runs from 3.7 GHz upwards. I was actually personally more excited into checking it out, since this represents the more mainstream oriented segment of CPUs, which is found in value builds. This little beast packs a total of 6 cores, of course without hyper-threading feature, but we are used to seeing that from Core i5 series, and it can go up to 4.3 GHz on Turbo Boost while having 95W TDP. Yes, it has an integrated GPU also, but you'll only get a slight bump in frequency and that's it, no major architectural changes. Unfortunately, the rumors were true and they were actually confirmed not so long ago, even before today's official launch, and that is that the ongoing Kaby Lake chipsets, like the Z271 for example, do not support Coffee Lake CPUs, so upgrading to a new motherboard is imminent. So for this time, my choice was MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC, and you can too expect a review of it soon. Although the total pin number, 1151 of them, and pin layout of the socket is completely the same compared to it, this wasn't enough to keep them compatible in both directions. I could even put my Core i7-6700K into the socket of MSI's Z370 motherboard. Of course, don't try to turn it on with it in the socket, although I don't doubt someone will try that out eventually. Other than the change for the socket compatibility, the rest of it is completely the same from DDR4 to cooler mount support, so you won't have any additional words in regards of installing components. Another very pleasant surprise beside the core count rise was hidden in the form of the overclocking potential of the Coffee Lake and this particular CPU. I managed to reach fully stable 5.1 GHz at 1.285 volts. yes you've heard it correctly, over 5 GHz of frequency for a daily use and with so to speak normal voltage values. Now that's really something. I could even reach 5.3 and 5.2 GHz but it just required too much voltage in order to be stable, which is just not worth it in my opinion compared to the 5.1 GHz at just below 1.3 volts. With those settings I was mostly roaming around 65 to 70 degrees Celsius during AIDA's system stability load testing, with the CPU being under my pretty capable MSI Core Frozer L Air CPU cooler. That's a good result having in mind that this is a 6 core CPU being pumped up with almost 1.3 volts. Under stock settings during load that was more around 55 to 65 degrees Celsius, which is again pretty decent. Idle temperature was a bit off in my opinion, it looks like the C states didn't work properly. The frequency and voltage never went completely down, so I don't think this around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius temperature is a representative number. I assume that's probably due to this being a sample motherboard and having a pre-production version of the BIOS. 
getting finally to the real stuff, you are all probably most interested in seeing the CPU's performance. Beside the Core i5-8600K, I've also had a Core i7-6700K and an AMD's Ryzen 7 1700X. Yes, bear with me for a moment, please. I know that it doesn't make sense to put them side by side as they are in completely different price segments and lineups, but since I didn't have anything other in hand at the moment, it's still cool to see how it compares to them. That said, I was really surprised to see the results. Overclocked like this, and even in some stock scenarios, the Core i5-8600K is to say at least on par with both of them. It basically beats my Core i7-6700K in every benchmark, while it will give AMD's Ryzen 7 1700X a run for its money, especially knowing that that's an 8-core 16-thread CPU, so getting them side by side wasn't a bad circumstance after all. Thanks to its better IPC performance and 6 cores, the Core i5-8600K shows great capability across the board, being it with synthetic benchmarks, real-life use or games. For example, the overclocked Core i5-8600K in Blender was only 67 seconds slower than the 1700X, while in that same test it beats the Core i7-6700K even at stock frequency. With handbrake encoding I have the same story, but when it comes to game it outright outperforms both of them, especially overclocked. It's hard to say that Coffee Lake is a flawless platform on account of few things, like not supporting previous generations of chipsets and motherboards, although having the same socket, let's not forget the slightly increased pricing and having a pretty rushed out launch and thus probably limited supply for the start. Coffee Lake was actually initially planned to launch in early 2018, but I can't deny that the Core i5-8600K will make a lot of users happy, especially given gamers and overclockers, those who want to get the best value possible. That said, with the new Coffee Lake lineup, we are witnessing a pretty big change in Intel's philosophy after quite some time. In the end, there has been a lot of core CPU generations behind us, and many years have passed with Intel clinging to that same core configuration year after year after year. Now all of that is finally changed and we can basically thank AMD for that, for not just poking Intel with the stick to do something, but rather hitting it with the baseball bat. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line, or you can just check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!